The city of Patterson is actually under siege. Gun violence reached an all time high since the pandemic began and city leaders are now looking to turn the page on this deadly violence. Patterson saw more than a dozen shootings just last month and most of them took place in broad daylight. Mayor Andre Saya is looking to put an end to all of this and he joins us now live to talk about it. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Betty. OK, so it's been very tough for your city. Let's talk about the number of guns on the street because you've already taken a number of them off with an initiative there. How many guns and, and what are you doing to make that happen? Yeah, as a result of our gun suppression program, last year we seized 200 guns. In January, we were able to confiscate 21, February 26. And then in March, on March 12th, one day alone within the span of four hours, we got three guns. And over the past two days, we got two more guns, and we seized one of the guns from a 16-year-old. Wow. So these shooters are getting younger. Unfortunately, you've mentioned the pandemic. I believe the increase in gun violence throughout the country is a byproduct of the pandemic, and we're seeing the shooters are much younger now. It's unfortunate because businesses have been out. Schools have been closed mm -hmm. since last March. So unfortunately, that makes for a very, very dangerous mix. It really does, because on one hand, it's good that you're getting these guns off the street. On the other hand, the fact that you're continuing to see them on the street is very problematic, and especially seeing all of this crime and violence in broad daylight. So talk to us about this initiative that is underway, because I understand that you're going to be partnering um, rookies with experienced cops to go through neighborhoods in broad daylight, what, from 80, uh, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., right, to try to curb this violence. Correct, Betty. We, we're basing this on data. We're starting to see a number of our shootings occur during the day because we had what's called, or we do have what's called an extra patrol initiative, and that's in the evenings. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take these new recruits, pair them up with seasoned veterans, and they'll be patrolling our streets. As a matter of fact, I'll be joining them in a, in a short time. Okay, today. so you're hoping to have, what, 419 officers in this program by the end of the year. But Patterson has fewer cops than New Jersey's other large cities. Why is that? Why are you having yeah. such a tough time? Ten years ago, we had over 500, and then 125 police officers were laid off. And at that time, I was a councilman. I always advocated for trying to retain those police officers by any way we could, whether it was to finding federal funding, state funding, but unfortunately, we couldn't. So as mayor, I said to myself, what, what is realistic is to finally get to the number of 419, which mm -hmm. is what we can afford at this time. And we also made a big push on the census because Patterson's population is about 146,199 people. If we reach the 150,000 mark, as far as our population is concerned, we're mm -hmm. designated a class one city, and that means more federal funding. We can hire more police officers. So that's why we're anxiously awaiting the outcome of this last census count. We need it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. When do you think you'll hear that? I'm, I'm hearing in the fall. Okay. It's a little too late for me. All right. Well, let's talk about, because you alluded to it, the, the program that you launched um, overnight, it, the, the one where you had the extra protection initiative, which basically right. is, is helping you until around the 3 to 4 a.m. hours. Did that become such a success that you're kind of using that as a model for this daytime initiative? That's how we've been able to seize all those guns, because a number of those that have been confiscated, it's usually between the hours of like 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. The guns we got this weekend were in that time frame as well. All right. So, you know, starting this week, it's great that that's working, but you're taking one step further um, in, in the high crime areas during the daytime. What are you talking? Are you out, doing some outreach to the community as well so that they understand and are prepared to see these officers there? Yes, we are. In fact, they started yesterday. We wanted to start on a Sunday. So we wanted to make sure that people in the various neighborhoods would know that they're there. We're not just starting on a, a week or a work day, so mm -hmm. to speak, that we would be coming on the weekend and you'll see a presence. Because, Betty, we also saw that there were shootings taking place on Sunday afternoons. Goodness. So why not start them on that day as well? Right. But it's, it's more than just walking around. It, it's about building a relationship, right? It, yes. It, talk to me about that. Betty, trust is the operative word, right? We've seen what's happened in this country as far as the relationship between the police departments around the country and the public. George Floyd, that tragedy that occurred there in, in Minnesota, that's affected us all. And quite frankly, it's shaken the faith in the men and women in the blue uniforms. Mm -hmm. So I feel like not only will it help us hopefully reduce gun violence, but it'll also improve 
the relationship between the police and the public. Mm -hmm. Which is very key. Let me ask you quickly, because since you kind of modeled this over the overnight initiative, how quickly was that overnight initiative um, successful, if you will? Well, I would like to think that it took some time. However, if you're looking at season, we've seized about what, almost 60 guns in mm -hmm. this year, and there were 102 days in. Yeah, that's a lot. 2021, we're, 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 on, we're on track to eclipse last year's mark as far as gun seized. If we got 200 last year and we were at like 60 this year, and you still about, you said about eight months left. Right, right. Roughly. Right. But clearly There's a lot is of guns working. out there, it's Betty. Clearly, There's a lot of guns. A lot of guns, a lot of violence. I know you're doing your part in trying to curb all this quickly, though. I'm not going to throw away my shot to talk about what? the fact that you've been fully vaccinated. I have. I have the Johnson & Johnson. I'm not as fortunate as people like you who got Moderna. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to compare, Mayor. No, not at all. That's, <laughs> that was unfair. That's true. But as long as people continue to get vaccinated, that's all that matters. This week we'll be vaccinating again thousands of people in Patterson. Unfortunately, we're going to get zero doses of Johnson & Johnson, which right. I do believe is a game changer because then you can reach the most vulnerable portions of your population. You can vaccinate the homebound. You can get the homeless. You can get individuals that normally wouldn't come to us, we, and we will go to them, and we'll have to go to them again. We go to them once. Right. All right, Mayor, I see the Hamilton uh, painting behind you, and you didn't throw away your shot. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Betty, that was a clever line. <laughs> you, are, you are as smart as you look. Oh, thank you, Betty. thank you, Mayor. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Stay healthy. You too. Thanks.